Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about char arrays. Um, this is very similar to Xilabs if you're using the book. I'm working through week eight, the word frequencies lab. If not, that's fine. It is still a good example for char arrays and how to read a list of names using char arrays and how to search for a name in there. So when you think about char arrays, we know char arrays, just a single dimensional array, one name gets stored. It's a list of characters. For example, this char array search name is a single name or a single string, single char array, which is a list of characters. What we need for this program is to be able to store a list of names, not just one name. So here is a quick drawing. I'm going to switch over to my whiteboard and show you how a list of names will look like in um, in a char using a char array. You all know you have done strings. So let me see if I can switch to text. And so if I do text, you know, string names of 30 will give you an array of names. You all know how to do that. And that essentially makes a list of names. So if I switch over to my pencil, you can have a list of names. Okay, let's draw the string of names that will look like that, right? And you have your names. Now, with a two-dimensional char array, what we are looking at is it's essentially the same thing but it's better to visualize it like this because one name is a list of characters. So it's going to look like this. Each name is going to have its own row with a whole bunch of characters for the names. Okay. So if we like that, this whiteboard seems to take time, but that's okay. We will go through and draw this. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, now I'm going to start putting some letters here. Let's say the name here is D-I-Y-A. That's a name. And then you all know the null character goes at the end. G-D, and then the null character goes at the end. I can get the null character to show up well. Then I would go Sally. That's an S, A, K, L, L. You get the idea. Okay, so we go from 0, 1, 2, and so on. And then this side, we go 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay, so you know from this where we are going, all we are saying is this is a two dimensional char array with this direction indicating the number of names, which would be rows, and this direction indicating the number of columns, which is the number of characters in each name or in each string, however you want to say it, right? So here is a two-dimensional char array with rows and columns, rows being the number of names and columns being the number of characters. Okay, now keeping that in mind, if we go back to Visual Studio, here's what we have. Name list, char, name list, 10 and 31. So what this says is I can have 10 names with, let's say, 31 characters each. Right, actually I should say 30 because we have that last one for the null character. So that's really what this char array is all about. And that's what you need to be able to store a list of strings or a list of whatever, list of characters, list of strings, list of words. That's what you're looking at. I also have a char array called search name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read a list of names, store them, and then I'm going to search through the list of names for the user. They will enter a search name and I will find it. That's all I'm going to do here. So count, I'm asking them how many names they want to enter. I can store a maximum of 10 names. I should say that in my prompt. Maximum, maximum, let's 
spell it, maximum of 10 names. Okay, so I told the user, count how many names would you like to, uh, see out how many names would you like to enter? Maximum of 10 names. I also have an integer variable called frequency, so I can count how many times their name occurs in the list when they search for it. So C and count, I read how many names would you like to enter? They say whatever, maximum of 10 names. Please enter the names separated by space or the enter key. That tells you right there, I am not reading names with spaces. I am just using the extraction operator. I am not using the get line which you could, if you were to read strings with spaces, you should be using get line. That would be cn.getLine, and then look up the parameters for get line. Okay, there is another video for that. So you go through the for loop, they enter five, they'll be entering five names, that's what count is, right? And then you say, please enter the name separated by space, you read the name, then you say, okay, now enter a name to search for in the list. So they enter a name to search, and again, doesn't have space the extraction operator. Then I go through the whole list again, the same for loop, I go through the whole list, and I do a string compare. Now, something to notice here, when I read the name, notice a two-dimensional array, but I still read it at name list of i. What I'm doing here is I'm reading, if you go back to the whiteboard, I'm reading each name as an aggregate name. Now, you know with C strings or char arrays, you can read the whole thing using CN. You don't need to read it character by character. But the square bracket is to say, I want to read each name because now we have a list of names. So we only have one square bracket, if you notice, to say I'm reading the first name, the whole thing, the first name, then the second name, which is the row below. Then I'm reading the third name. So it goes like this, the first name. Then I'm reading the second name, then I'm reading the third name, and so on and so forth. And so anything that you do with the char array after that, the two-dimensional char array works the same way. I'm comparing. I'm comparing the first name, then I'm comparing the second name, the third name, and so on and so forth. So once we have read the name, I read the search name. Now this is a single name, so no square bracket here. I'm comparing, I go through a for loop, I'm comparing the search name with the name in the list, so a square bracket. So a single name, a single name, but what tells me that this is a single name is that square bracket i. So search name is getting compared with the first name, name list of zero. If it matches, I increment the frequency. I have a variable called frequency starting at zero. I increment the count, then I go back. If it doesn't match, it doesn't do anything, it goes back, it increments i, finds the next name, compares the next name to the same search name, because search name doesn't change. And if it finds a match, I increment the count. If not, I go back and keep looking through the whole list. When I come out of the for loop, when my list is exhausted, I come out of the for loop and I check if frequency is greater than zero. That means there was at least one occurrence of the name found, and then I say your name was found this many times. If not, I say I couldn't find your name, right? So it's very similar to that, but it does talk about how to use your char arrays, the two-dimensional array, to create a list of names. So you may not use strings for that particular lab because you're required to use char array. Um, and this is how you use char arrays for that. And it says, how many names would you like to enter? Uh, I forgot to close my parenthesis. So let's say I want to enter five names. And I'm going to enter the five names separated by space. So you enter your five names. If you want to try your multiple occurrences, that's about five names there. You enter them again. OK, I want to search for Dia, which occurs two times. It says, hey, your name was found two times. And then you could run it again. Let me, um, I should have fixed the parenthesis, but I didn't. So it's okay. Okay, I want to enter six names and I enter GD, Dia. And you know, all of this is case sensitive. Doesn't matter. I can enter Maya five times. Okay, I said I'd enter one more name. And now I search for a name that doesn't exist. It says, sorry, you could not find your name. Okay. So try uh, using char arrays. That's not where it goes. It goes right there. For that lab or this is how you use two-dimensional char arrays to create a list of 
strings words